Hi. Welcome. So, are you ready to learn about some items today? Yes? Then I'm going to immediately get started. We have a list to get through. The first item that I'm going to explain to you today is this. This is a clipboard. Mm -hmm. So this part is the board. Sturdy and strong. You see? And I will tell you why it needs to be that way. But first, let me show you the clip. So this is the clip. Hence, it being a clip board. Clip board. Now, this particular one has quite a busy design. They do not all look like this. For example, this is also a clipboard. Okay, so clip board. board. Okay, so this has a very different design. We've got a black and white polka dot design here, but this one is quite intricate and that would just take us too far. So for today, let's stick with this basic, more simple type of clipboard. But it does have a very intricate design. This one in particular is a promo material for a university. So we see a professor, we see a professor, we see some students, someone on a bicycle, just a lot going on, some students working together, yeah, just a lot going on. There's some information on the back of the clipboard as well. Okay, but pay no mind to that. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's quite sturdy. And the reason is, is because a clipboard is used to clip paper. Yes. It's very interesting. I will show you. So, this part, the clip, 
you can open it and you can clip a piece of paper between it. It's very strong, so it grips the paper so that it does not slide out. So that's why this is so strong and a little difficult to open because paper obviously is very thin. It's very thin. Paper is just extremely thin. So you do need a very strong mechanism to hold it. Okay, now let me show you. So you open the clip. I have the paper here. And you just slide it in and the clip holds it. Okay? So just like this. And it is quite secure. You don't want to give it too much of a yank, but it's quite secure. So, for example, a very strong gust of wind will not pose any sort of problem. Okay? Got it. So, sturdy, meaning you can write on it. So you hold the clipboard like this, and then you take your pen, you take your pen, and you can write on it, and that's why it's so sturdy, okay? Because you cannot write on paper if you're just holding it even like a notebook, a regular notebook. Maybe I should cover a notebook in one of the next uh, sessions. But so, even a notebook can be problematic to write on if you're just holding it. But this clipboard is perfect, okay? I will demonstrate now. I just used some regular ruled white paper. So it's ruled and there's a list on it. A list. Mm -hmm. So ruled white paper, two holes punched. Yeah, we covered this in a previous session, I think. Mm -hmm. So a list. Very convenient for lists. Okay. Now, this list is actually the list of items that we're going to see today. So, the list of items that I'm going to So I feel that we can cross off the clipboard off the list. So let me now demonstrate its functionality. So you're just holding the clipboard and you can just write. Doesn't matter if you're left handed or right handed. Okay, there's with this clipboard. That doesn't matter. With the other clipboard, the one that is little, a little more specialized, it does matter. But this is a basic clipboard, which was good to start you on. 
the next item on our list. Let's have a look. pen, which is what I'm holding right now. Now, this is something quite special. So, this is a friction pen. Now, you may be wondering, why are we discussing pens again? We've been there. Trust me, we have not. These friction pens are special, okay? They have a special type of ink in there, which can be erased. So, it can be erased with this part of the pen, this part. So, you can erase uh, what you wrote, okay? So, just like with a pencil, you can erase it, but it's not a pencil, it's a pen, okay? So, it's quite convenient, okay? Let me show you. This is one of those pens with a cap. Okay, so think back to the type of pens that we discussed. So, you have the ones with the cap. This is one of those ones with a cap. So you take off the cap, exposing the ballpoint that you can write with. So technically, this is not a ballpoint, okay? I shouldn't have said that. That has made things confusing. That's my bad. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. So, you can write with this just like any pen. So, for example, I could write clipboard plus paper. Clipboard plus paper. It's right there. Plus paper. And I can now erase it. It does take a little bit of force to erase it perfectly. I'm gonna do it here. I'm not gonna do it up close there. I'm gonna do it here, but I'll show you the result. Again, demonstrating how sturdy and convenient these clipboards are. They even carry the force and the weight behind, um, you know, that it takes to erase the writing of the pen. Okay, so it's gone now. It's gone. It's erased. So the beauty of it is, you can now write across the same area with the pen, erase it again and again and again. It is quite the marvel and I do feel great progress in terms of 
10 technology. Now, I have a treat for you. We are going to refill this pen. So, these friction pens are refillable, which is um, yeah, ecological and economical because, you know, it saves you some money as well because the first pen, you know, the purchase of the initial pen is a bit of an investment. Okay, so you can twist them open Remove the back, and this exposes the filling. Okay. There we go. Now, this might be a little bit quirky, but you have come to know me. I can be quirky. We are going to put a blue filling in it. So these are the fillings. They come in these little plastic boxes. Friction pens. Um, there's three of them in a box. Going to take one out. Has a little cap. I'm going to remove the cap of the blue one and place it on the black one. The black one is not completely depleted yet. You may be able to see, but there is still quite a bit of ink in it. There is quite a bit of ink left in the black pen, but we're quite I honestly need another blue one. And because I use my blue one so much, it has begun to show wear and tear. I'll get back to you on that. So you take the filling, place it in the bottom half, Screw on the cap. Screw it on tight. Okay? You have to, to loosen it, you turn left, 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 left. You turn left, left, left. To tighten it, you turn right. left, right. All done. Now, like I promised, why do I need the blue one? Because I have used my blue one so much, it has begun to show wear and tear in two areas. One area being the eraser. I've used it so much that it has begun to deteriorate and it does not work as well. The other area is this comfort grip. There is a little rubber like part here, where you hold it, as we discussed when we covered pens, where you hold it for comfort and grip. And this has started to come 
under on my blue one. So I don't use this one as much, so it can now become my blue one. The possibilities are endless with these friction pens. Okay. I think we have covered those. Let's check them off the list. Perfect. Perfect. A perfect check. Next. Very interesting. We have a clock. for this one. Here it is. It's not just any clock, though. Here we have a clock. This one is in the shape of a country. Most clocks you will see are round. Round. Okay? They will have the shape of a circle. Okay, round. But this one is special. It is shaped like the country. Suriname. Okay, so Suriname. Suriname is a country in South America above Brazil and it's shaped like this. Okay? explain how it works. So, with a clock, usually you will have numbers around it because a clock is used to tell time. Okay. And the most convenient way to do that is using numbers. There are artsy clocks that don't have any numbers at all. But that, that will take us on a whole other path. So, numbers. In this case, we are working with Roman numerals. There are four numbers on top, bottom, and uh, on the right and the left. Okay. So, in between, on this clock, they have made the choice not to put numbers just to put little dashes, little bars as indicators to help you gauge where the hands are at, to help you be more accurate in your telling of time, okay? So, though this clock is not, has not gone so far as giving you no numbers or no indication at all, uh, 
There are clocks that are much more detailed. You have clocks, for example, that will give you the full 12 numbers and beyond that will give you these little uh, indicators that will let you tell the exact minute as well. Okay. So this clock does not give you as much information as it could. But isn't it beautiful? Okay, so briefly we have this number 12, 3, 6, and 9. Okay, so let me repeat that. Twelve, three, six, nine. Okay, and then these represent one, two, four, five, seven, eight, and ten, eleven. Okay, you got that? Now, I'm not going to make this a full session around telling time, uh, but I do want to explain just the process, just quickly. We have two hands. Yes, the hands of time. These are hands. Uh, the long one is called the minute hand. The shorter one is called the hour hand. So the names already tell you quite a bit, okay? So the hour hand is telling you what hour it is. And the minute hand is telling you how many minutes into the hour we are. Okay. Now, here we are approaching a quarter to eleven. We are approaching a quarter to eleven. Yes. Um, I would say about it just moved. Did you see that? It just moved. So I would say about sixteen minutes to eleven. clock does not have a second hand, second indicator, which makes it quite convenient because it doesn't tick. Okay, so that, that's nice. It's not a ticking clock. It's just a clock. Okay. Now, that was it for our clock. Next on the list, we have... The clock was a bit dusty. We have a clothes hanger. And it is used to hang clothes. Okay. So when you want to hang up clothes in your closet, you will hang them on one of these. This one is quite versatile because you can hang shirts, dresses, sweaters, you know, things with sleeves on it, here. But you can also hang it 
You can also use it to hang pets on it or strapless tops, strapless dresses, things without sleeves, okay? Uh, skirts that do not have a loop. Very versatile. So this part of the clothes hanger is used to hang the clothes onto it. And this metal part is used to hang it on the rod in your closet. Okay? Now, quite often, these twists some cheaper ones. They don't make them twistable. But this one is quite a deluxe model. So it twists. So you can choose how to hang it. You can also, for example, hang it from your closet door like this. Like I said, quite versatile. Now, to special features, this little notch, these little notches, there's one right here, right here, and there's one right here, do you see? Right here. So two notches. These are very convenient for strappy tops or the loops that I mentioned that you can sometimes find in skirts or strapless dresses and such. Okay, so it won't slip off. But the second feature means it wouldn't really easily slip off anyway because this clothes hanger is lined completely with velvet. So there's a black velvet fabric around it. Black velvet. So soft and plush. It's not just pretty and luxurious, it has a function. It keeps your clothes from slipping off. So even the most silky smooth blouse would stay on this hanger. These are also quite rounded, so they do not create angles in your sweaters or cardigans. How wonderful. Now, we may return to our clothes hanger for a little bit at the end, but for now, Let's cross it off, or check it, to be more exact. Next on the list, would you like to look? Next on the list, a pillowcase. 
are with the pillowcase. Now, a pillowcase can have a variety of shapes and designs. This one is square. is quite small for a decorative pillow on a sofa or a decorative pillow on a bed and it is blue and gold it has a beautiful intricate sort of geometric pattern that looks quite like leaves. Can you tell? The back is a plain blue and also a quite velvety fabric. Quite velvety. Quite velvety, yes. Very soft. Yes. I would describe it as velvet. Velvet like. Velvet esque. So this pillow does have a front and a back, this pillowcase. That is not the case with all pillowcases. Many of them have the same pattern on both sides. So they do not have a front or a back. This one does. What I would say most pillowcases do have is a zipper because you need to be able to insert the pillow. Now, many pillowcases have a different kind of opening, but with these decorative pillowcases that you do not remove very often to wash, you often see a zipper being used. So there is a zipper on one side. It is an invisible zipper. So when it is closed, you do not see it. Only by this little metal zip pull. same blue as the pillowcase. So you can open it. Not fully. There is about an inch on each side that does not unzip, so there's about an inch on this about an inch on this side as well, so, which means you have to do a little bit of a wriggle to get your pillow in there, okay? So just wriggle it in, uh, just squish it a little bit to get it in there, okay? You have a little tag lists the uh, fabric and the washing instructions, okay? So, wash at low heat, this one, and on, um, it does not matter uh, if it's a gentle cycle, it doesn't matter, but low heat, okay? No 
dryer and no ironing, okay? So when your pillow is in there, nice and snug, you close the zipper, maybe fluff it up a bit. and place it wherever you would like. Now, again, we will be returning to the pillowcase for just a bit, in a moment, but the explanation is done, so let's give it a check. I don't know if you saw it. The last item on the list. Did you see it before? Did you see it? It is a lint roller. Now, just like many things in this world, many of the things that we have discussed and will discuss, lint rollers can come in many sizes. For example, these two are quite different in size. This is a rather large one. And this is quite small. It's quite small. There's a big difference between them. Now, this one is quite a heavy duty one. Um, and so, a lint roller consists out of two main parts. We have the, the holder and the handle. Okay, the holder and the handle, which is one part, it tends to be plastic. And it is the black part here. And then we have the roll. Okay, so this is the roll. And it rolls. So, this is what you use to roll lint off of clothes, furniture, etc. Okay? So this is sticky. one is incredibly sticky. This is quite a heavy-duty lint roller for cat hair. So this is designed to remove cat hair or, I suppose, dog hair as well. But specifically cat hair. So this is extremely duty. This little one, however, is not quite as heavy duty. This is just designed to remove lint from your clothing. Okay, so again, we have the, the holder. Okay, so the part that consists out of the holder and the handle. And then we have the roll. This is a new roll. So, when you are using the lint roller, you will need to remove uh, pieces of sticky paper. Okay, 
when they are no longer sticky, when they are covered with lint or cat hair or whatever, they are not sticky anymore. So you remove the outer layer, revealing another sticky layer within. And you keep doing that, remove the outer layer, remove the outer layer, revealing a new sticky layer, okay? So, you understand. Now, obviously, you cannot do that indefinitely, okay? There's very little that you can do indefinitely in this world. You cannot indefinitely erase with the friction pen. You cannot indefinitely keep washing your pillowcase and have the design look beautiful. You cannot indefinitely remove sticky paper from your lint roller. Okay. So at one point you run out and then you remove the old roll. This one you can squish, squish the end together, these plastic ends, these plastic ends right here. You can squish them together to slide off the cardboard center that we have within each roll to provide structure, okay, to provide structure to the roll. So you remove the cardboard and you slide on a new one. The new one has some sort of protective layer so that it does not stick to everything before you start to use it. So this has a protective layer of paper around it. So we're just going to remove that so I can demonstrate. being held together by a little piece of tape. Okay. Like so. is also sticky. Not quite as heavy duty sticky as the other one, but sufficiently sticky for all your lint rolling needs. is known to catch quite a bit of dust. Velvet will catch a lot of lint. So, you can use the lint roller. Gently remove all of that and restore the fabric to its gorgeous black. Yeah. 
forget to get the edges as well. bottom won't need as much, but you can run alongside of it once, just, or twice, just to make sure. And then the other side. But I do see that we might want to change the sheet. So this one, you will see a terrible line. So you just peel it off until you make it to that terrible line and then you tear it off. And you can dispose of the used side. Go back to, okay, the side. And continue. Just gently Cleaning all lint off of the hanger. Okay, so just demonstrating how a lint roller works. And this looks perfectly new. Okay. for good measure, demonstrate it on our pillow as well. Our pillowcase. Okay, now this side is quite smooth because it's so heavily embroidered, it's not likely to catch very much lint. So you can just kind of see if you see anything that might have landed on it. Doesn't need a vigorous lint rolling. Just some touches here and there. side, however, which is quite velvety. It's different. You can tell by how much the lint roller sticks to it. That 
You get the idea. Okay. Well then, I think we can cross the final item off of our list. Lint roller. Check. Okay. Let me check. seen everything that I want to see today. Uh, just let me know if you have any questions or any particular requests for upcoming sessions, okay? Thank you for your undivided attention, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.